Hi, first graders. Welcome back to your TV classroom. Today is Friday. Yes, got that right. February 26th. How are you today? My brain just did a little wiggle. Does that ever happen to you when you're trying to say something? Oh, well. Let's check in with our bodies and brains and see how we're feeling today. Hmm. How are you feeling today, friends? What zone are you in? Mr. Kevin, what zone are you in today? I am in the green zone with a little dash of yellow. A little dash of yellow. Sometimes yeah. that happens. Yeah, sometimes that happens. How about you, Mrs. Wally? I'm in the green zone today. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm doing really well. I'm nice and focused and my body's ready. And I thought I'd be tired today, but I'm not too tired. So here we go. Yeah. Friends, let's do our Fact Fun Friday today. Here we go. Take a look at this first fact. What is 20 minus 10? Hmm, it's 10. 10 plus 10 is 20. Now today I'm writing with my finger on my screen because I need to get a new pen. So if my writing looks a little wobbly, I apologize. What's 30 minus 10? 20, yep, this number in the tens place just goes down by one. What's 40 minus 10? This number's gonna go down by one. 30. What's 50 minus 10? 40. What's 60 minus 10? 50. Each time the digit in the tens place goes down by one because we're subtracting a group of 10. Today we are practicing how to solve addition and subtraction word problems using number bonds and number lines and what we know. Are you ready? Let's do a warm up. Some boys sing. Seven more boys joined them. Now 15 boys sing. How many boys were singing to start? Mr. Kevin, can we have both up please? So I know that this problem is a part, part, whole problem. I have two parts and a whole. And how I make that in a, in a um, bar model is I have a rectangle. I know I'm gonna have two parts and I'm gonna have a whole. Let's figure out the question and where we're gonna put that question mark. Some boys sing. Seven more boys joined them. Now 15 boys sing. How many boys were singing to start? Where's our question mark gonna go? Some boys sing, seven more boys join them, now there's 15. Where's our question mark gonna go? Yeah, in this first box, we don't know how many boys start. Okay, now let's put in the rest of the information we know. Some boys sing, seven more boys join them. Oh, what could we put here? Seven, because seven boys join them. Now there are 15 boys that are singing. So the total amount is 15 boys singing. Okay, what equation could we write that would match this? We could do question mark plus seven equals 15. Some boys are singing, seven more join them. Now there are 15. Go ahead and solve this. Hmm, well, I know 15's my whole and seven is the part that join. I need to find this first part. Well, I could do seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and I put eight more on. So, Eight boys were singing to start. Eight boys sing. Seven more boys joined them. Now 15 boys sing. Eight boys sing, seven more join. Now there's 15 boys singing. Go ahead and reset your board. Let's look at the next problem. Some hamsters are in a cage. Joseph lets three out. Now there are eight in the cage. How many were in the cage to start? Okay, let's do a number bond for this one. Go ahead, draw a number bond on your whiteboard. 
And we're gonna put the parts we know and the parts we're trying to figure out on our number bond. I know they give it to us, but I wanna walk through it without give them giving it to us. Some hamsters are in a cage. Joseph lets three out. Now there are eight in the cage. So there's a total amount of hamsters in the cage. We don't know how many. Three were left out. Now there's eight left. If we put the three back in, we can find out how many there are all together. So there's eight left in the cage. Let's put the three back in that we took out. One, two, three. How many hamsters are in the cage? 11. There are 11 hamsters in the cage. Joseph lets three out. Now there are eight hamsters in the cage. How many hamsters were started in the cage? 11, because that's how many, if we put the three back in, how many total hamsters we have. Okay, 17 soccer balls. You can show this big, Mr. Kevin. 17 soccer balls are on the field. Asher kicks nine of them away. How many soccer balls are there now? If you notice, they put 17 at the top of the number bond because that's how many soccer balls started on the field. Then they didn't add them. We didn't put more on. They took some away because Asher kicked them away. How many did Asher kick away? Nine, so we put the part that we took away in the first box right here on our number bond. And we're trying to figure out this other part. We can do the same thing we just did. I'm going to use white and draw here on our slide. We know we need a total of 17. We kick nine away. Let's count on to find out how many soccer balls we are, that are left. Ready? We're gonna go all the way to 17. We're starting at nine, because that's how many we kicked away. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, se Mr. Kevin, do you see what I did? I said nine, it was 10. Yeah. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 soccer balls. Do we have 17? We do. We have 10 and five and two. How many of them are X's though? Because those are the, the soccer balls that are left. How many X's are there? Well, I see seven, eight. So if the nine go away, we take those away, boo, how many soccer balls are left? Eight. So 17 minus nine equals eight. There are eight soccer balls. Barry has, a, has 15 pet rocks. Ooh, Pebble, this is a story about you. 15 pet rocks. Don has nine pet rocks. How many more rocks does Barry have? Ooh, Mr. Kevin, can you show my whiteboard? This one's different than what we've been doing. This isn't a part, part, hole, where I have a hole and I take a part away. This is a comparing problem, okay? Barry doo -doo -doo, has 15 rocks. Dan has nine, so his is less. Dan has nine. When it says how many more or how many fewer or how many less, we want to know that different part, okay? Here is Barry. Whoa, here we go, 15. Here is, Did it, drop? it dropped. Here is Dawn, one, two, three, four. Oh wait, this is 10, I can just take one off. So we know 15 and we know nine. When it's asking how many more or how many fewer, it wants to know what's the different part between the two. Well, what is it? Five and one is six. Let's see if using the number line, if we get the same answer. Can you go ahead and go back to the full screen, Mr. Kevin? So we're starting at 15 and we're counting, hopping back to nine. We're finding what the different part is, the part that's in between the two numbers. So 15 to 10 is five. It has to be a different color so we can see it, is five. 
and then 10 to 9 is 1, and 1 plus 5 is 6. So if we're at 15 and we take away 6, we land at 9. We took away, how many did we take away? 6. He has six more rocks. We counted the part in between. Or you could do 15 minus 9 equals 6. But our representation here is taking away 6 to get to the 9. Let's have you do this next one on your own. We'll do the read through and draw the model together, and then you're going to solve it on your own. 10 red shoes are on the floor. 10 pink shoes are on the floor. How many shoes in all? Okay, so first of all, we have to ask ourselves, is this a two part question or are we comparing? Let's look. We have red shoes on the floor. This is what's happening. Can you show my whiteboard, Mr. Kevin? What's happening in the problem? We've got red shoes on the floor. We've got pink shoes on the floor and we wanna know how many total shoes there are. Oh, look at that. It's a part, part, whole. Let's figure out where the question mark's gonna go. 10 red shoes are on the floor. 10 pink shoes are on the floor. How many shoes in all? Where's the part that shows in all here on my bar model? Yeah, the top. This is the whole thing, all that we count it all up. Let's put our information in. 10 red shoes are on the floor. Ooh, we have 10 red shoes. And 10 pink shoes are on the floor. We have pink shoes. So we have 10 red shoes, 10 pink shoes. Go ahead and solve. 30 seconds. Okay, I know when I have two parts to find the whole, I join them together. 10 plus 10 equals, I don't know. What is 10 plus 10? It's 20 equals the question mark. So how many shoes? 20 shoes. I can erase this question mark and say 20 shoes. Did you get 20 shoes? Good job. Let's do this next one. 14 birds sit on a fence. Some birds fly away. Now, there are five. How many birds fly away? What's happening in this problem? Yeah, we've got some birds on a fence. Some of the birds fly away. And then there's some left. Let's figure out where our question mark's gonna go. 14 birds sit on a fence. Some birds fly away. Now there are five birds. How many birds fly away? Where do we have the birds that were flying away? Yeah, this part that I took away. So we're gonna put a question mark here. We're trying to figure out this part we don't know. Let's put the information in that we know. 14 birds sit on a fence. That's a total amount of birds on the fence to start. 14 birds sit on a fence. Some fly away. Now there are five. Go ahead. 30 seconds, solve. No, there's 14 birds. I'm gonna take away some and there's five left. Well, I can start at five or I can go 14 and I'm gonna need to land at five left. How many am I gonna take away? Well, 14 to 10 is four and 10 to five is five and four plus five is nine. 
nine birds flew away. We had 14, nine fly away, and there's five left. Our answer is nine birds fly away. Okie dokie, friends. 12 butterflies sit on a bush. Erase your board. 12 butterflies sit on a bush. Some fly away. Now there are five. How many fly away? This looks like what we just did. Let's do our reading through. Let's find our question and the parts we know, and then you can go ahead and solve using the information they give you. So there's butterflies, some fly away, and some are left. 12 butterflies sit on a bush. Some fly away. Now there are five. How many fly away? What's the question we're trying to answer? Yeah, we want to know how many of the butterflies flew away. What information can we use to help us figure that out? What do we know to solve what we don't know? Yeah, there's 12 butterflies that start on the bush, and we know that there are five left. They've written an equation for you. 12 minus, we don't know how many fly away, and there's five left. Go ahead and solve. 30 seconds. <laughs> I'm at 12, and I'm gonna go all the way to five to have five left. I need to count the hops between 12 and five. Well, from 12 to 10 is two, and from 10 to five is five, as we know five and five makes 10. What's five plus two? Seven. So how many butterflies fly away? Seven fly away. Now let's check and make sure it makes sense. There are 12 butterflies, seven fly away, there are five butterflies left. Is seven and five 12? It is. We found seven fly away. Nice job, friends. Let's take a look at your assignment today. You're gonna continue practicing this stuff that we just did with number lines or pictures of um, counters or using your counters, solving story problems that include addition and subtraction. You're gonna do page 395 and 396 in your math workbook. Today we learned, oh, Mr. Kevin, I thought I got them all right. <sighs> That's okay. But I'm gonna fix it because that happens. Today we didn't learn to practicing, we practiced. Today we practiced how to solve addition and subtraction word problems. We were able to act out the problems and talk about them. We modeled the problems. We wrote equations for the problem and we found a solution. Great job, first graders. Mr. Kevin, if they had questions for us on these problems, how could they contact us? Oh, sure, you can have your adult help you email us at tvclassroom at tacoma.k12.wa.us. You can always e uh, send us regular mail. Uh, to the TV classroom at 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Kevin. Now, friends, it's time for your break. You need to gather your ELA packet, your learning notebook, your pencil, and your learning buddy for your time with Ms. Oslin. You're going to take your break, get your wiggles out, and then be back ready to learn. Have a wonderful time learning on the rest of your day, and I will see you next time. Bye. Today, young aviators, did you know that we live in an amazing state? Not only is Washington famous for its spectacular scenery, but did you know that Washington State is famous for making airplanes? So today, we will be using our arms muscular strength to fly around Washington State and see how beautiful it is. 
all you have to do is put your arms out when the bald eagle takes off from her totem pole and keep them flapping until she makes it back to her totem pole safely. Now, your arms might get a little tired, but that's okay. That's how we build our muscular endurance. Don't stop flapping until you land. Have a great flight.
astronaut cadets. This is your commanding officer reporting to you from Space Command. Today, we will be traveling to and exploring the moon. We call this mission Space Jump. Here's how it works. Number one, complete each of the four levels by reaching the star coin. Two, when you see me run, you run. Three, when you encounter an object coming towards you, you will need to either dodge, duck, dip, dive, or dodge in order to safely complete each level. And number four, have fun. Good luck, cadets.
First graders, welcome back from your break. I see that you are practicing strong independent learning habits by having all of your materials ready to go. Excellent job. Go ahead and take your um, ELA packet, your learning notebook, your pencil. You can put those off to the side. You won't need those yet, but you can keep your learning buddy on your lap if they are going to help you focus today. Now let's remind ourselves today and every day when we come together, your job is to listen, share, read, and write. You are a strong listener when you keep your eyes on the speaker, when you listen to the speaker, and when you think about the words and the ideas and the questions that I'm asking you to think about. You will get opportunities to share. I do want you talking out loud today. You can talk to your learning buddy, you can talk to me on the screen, or if there's someone in the room with you, you get to share your ideas with them. You will also get to listen to their ideas and think about how your ideas are similar or how they're different. Today we're learning personal narratives are about the writer's personal experiences and expressions. And we talked last time about how personal narratives use personal language such as I and my when they're telling their stories. This is something that you and I have done since we first learned how to talk. We first learned how to talk. We started saying I hmm or my hmm. That was the beginning of writing and telling your personal narratives using your expressions and your own personal experiences. And I'm thinking now about Mrs. Wally's son, Oliver, and she tells us stories all the time about the stories that he tells using the words I and my, and he's not even two. Today we're going to read a story called I Love My Hair by Natasha Anastasia Tarpley, and it's illustrated by E.B. Lewis. This topic is so interesting. It's I Love My Hair. Now, what do you think this story might be about? Take some think time. <laughs> and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking. Rashid, well, the title of the story is I Love My Hair, and I see on the cover a child with hair, and they are smiling. So it must be a personal narrative about our character, and they love their hair. Now, again, you'll notice even in the title, our author is using first person language. They're saying, I love my hair, as they narrate this story from our character's perspective. Now, why do you think our author Natasha chose to write about hair? Take some think time. <laughs> tell your learning buddy what you're thinking. Rashid, I think Natasha chose to write about hair because they have a personal connection. They know a lot about it. Uh, and I wonder too, if they wrote this story, I love my hair, because they thought maybe their readers would be curious about this topic. Now we're lucky that in this book, there's an author's note where our author tells us where they got the idea to write this book. So let's read this together. And it's gonna give us an explanation about the author and why Natasha chose the topic of hair in this personal narrative. This is how I fell in love with my hair. When I was a little girl, my mother would often comb my hair in the evening before I went to bed. I would make myself comfortable between her knees as she rubbed sweet smelling oil along the line of my scalp where she had parted my hair. Then she would start to comb. Sometimes she would tell me stories to distract me from the pain of stubborn tangles. But what I enjoyed most about those evenings and being so close to my mother, the texture and sound of my hair sliding through her fingers, the different hairstyles she would create, the smell of the hair oil mixing with the lingering scent of her perfume. I loved the way we laughed and talked about the day's events, just the two of us. 
now that I am older, my mother no longer combs my hair. I found this to be very liberating at first, but once in initial excitement over all the different styles I could now try began to wane. I saw that from, excuse me, I saw that beyond the freedom lay years of struggle. I went from one phase to another with my hair, from relaxers to punk rock spikes, from braids to barely there short natural. Almost two years ago, I decided to grow dreadlocks. For the first time since those nights when I sat between my mom's knees, I was at peace with my hair, at home again with myself. Wow, what a personal story Natasha has chosen to share with us. Now, let's think about how the events in our story, I Love My Hair, are similar to what our author has told us in her author's note. Every night before I go to bed, mama combs my hair. I sit between her knees, resting my elbows on her thighs like pillows. Mama is always gentle. She rubs coconut oil along my scalp and slowly pulls the comb through my hair, but sometimes it still hurts. When mama goes to, excuse me, I'm gonna start that over. When mama gets to ex especially tangled places, I try my hardest not to cry, sucking in my breath and pressing my hands together until they're red. Wow, she uses a lot of details here to describe the moment when her mother combed her hair. She says, every night before we went to bed. So she sets us up right there with our setting the where and the when of our story. I love my hair. And notice how she describes the action. I sit between her knees, resting my elbows on her knees like pillows, and how she shows her feelings without always telling them. For example, I try my hardest not to cry, sucking in my breath and pressing my hands together until they are red. How is she feeling? Yeah, she's in pain. They don't tell us that, they show us that and give us details where you and I have to think about it and make an inference. We have to figure out how they're feeling. But a few tears always manage to squeeze out. Mama, stop, I cry when I can't stand the comb tugging at my hair any longer. Mama puts the comb down and rubs my hurting places then she leans in close to me like she has a big secret to tell. Do you know why you're so lucky to have this head of hair, Kiana, she asks. I shake my head no. Because it's beautiful and you can wear it any style you choose. What a wonderful affirmation for that mom to have given that child. I can spin your hair into fine, soft yarn, just like your grandmother did at their spinning wheels and weave it into a puffy little bun. Or I can part your hair into straight lines and plant rows of braids along your scalp, the way we plant seeds in our garden, then wait and watch for them to grow. In the morning, before we walk to the store, Mama adds colorful beads to the ends of my braids. The beads click at the rhythm of my walk, helping me remember what we're going to buy. Tap, tap, clicky, clicky, clacky, milk, bread, peanut butter. Folks on the street look at me and smile as I dance along to the tap, tap, clicky, 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 clacky music my hair makes just for me. Some days, I just let my hair be free to do what it wants to do, excuse me, to do what it wants, to go any which way it pleases. Then my hair surrounds my head like a globe. This is my Afro smile, Afro style. I said that because she's smiling. She must feel really proud of her hair. Once when I wore it, the, wore, once when I wore it, the kids at school teased me. My head felt heavy and I let it hang down low. But my teacher made me feel better. She said that when she was growing up, folks counted their hair as a blessing. Wearing an Afro was a way for them to stand up for what they believed. 
to let the world know that they were proud of who they were and where they came from. I love my hair because it is thick as a forest, soft as cotton candy, and curly as a vine winding upward, reaching the sky, and climbing toward outer space. Today, I'm wearing it in my favorite style of all, two ponytails that stick out on either side of my head and flap in the air like a pair of wings. One of these days, I just might take off and fly. Today, we're learning that personal narratives are about the writer's personal expressions and experiences. And Natasha used an everyday event from her own life, her mother combing her hair, and found special memories and words that she could use to tell a wonderful, beautiful story. She used those own memories about her mother and the stories that they told to create her own story about her own hair and why it is so important to her and the reasons why she loves it. Readers learn from her story that hair helps her express herself just like her writing did. Writing a personal narrative is a way that you can express yourself. Now, you'll remember we don't use the word good storytelling, we use the word strong storytelling. When you go off to do your strong storytelling today, you're gonna to use first person language, such as I or my. You're gonna tell about personal experiences, memories, or passions, much like our author Natasha did for us here. You're gonna use details to describe the experiences and what is happening. I'm picturing the page when Natasha described her favorite hairstyle, which was the two ponytails and how her hair would flap like wings and that made her feel free, like she could fly. What great details that she used to describe that. It's gonna include pictures and illustrations that help to tell the story with a strong sense of place using descriptive details like she talked about being between her mother's knees. She talked about it being every night before bedtime. You're gonna connect to home and family. Natasha did an ex excellent example there, talking about being at home and her mom being the one to comb her hair. Can be ex inspired by a keepsake or a tradition, a tradition of combing her hair and changing her hairstyle. And it definitely will have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and provide a reaction at the end of the story. Now today, your job for your independent writing is to think and write and draw about what do you do to express yourself. Now, Natasha expressed herself by changing her hairstyle. Do you do that too? Do you express yourself in the way you dress or the way you act and speak? Or do you write and draw to express yourself? Take some think time. <music> your learning buddy what you do to express yourself. Rashid, I like to wear different earrings and different glasses to express myself. Now, your job is to write and draw about what you do to express yourself. And when you're independently reading today, I want you noticing how your author has included the elements of a story. Do you remember? Get your hand up and let's practice saying them together. Character, Character. Setting. setting, beginning, beginning middle, middle, end. end. You're gonna include these in your writing, but also notice how your authors include those in your stories that you're reading, and you can write about those story elements as well. And you can use this retelling the story chart to help you. It's in your ELA packet if you need it. You're gonna continue tracking your reading goals and sending this to your teacher every week so they know what it is that you're working on. You could also send us your writing here at TV Classroom. We'd love to know all about how you express yourself and how you're noticing the story elements in your independent reading texts. Mr. Kevin, can you tell our first graders how they can send us their work? Absolutely, have your adult help you. Send us an email by emailing <laughs> TV Classroom 
at tacoma.k12.wa.us, or you can send it in the mail, TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405. Thank you, Mr. Kevin. Now is time for our affirmation. This is the time in our lesson when we get to say positive things about ourselves before we go off to do our independent work. Today, I want you to think about something that you love about yourself, much like our author Natasha did. She said, I love my hair. I want you to think, I love my, hmm. Take some think time. Now, you're gonna say it out loud. I love my, hmm, I'm gonna say, I love my skin. Soft. Now, first graders, excellent job today. Thank you so much for being here reading and thinking with me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I look forward to seeing you back here next time in our TV classroom. Bye. Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.